In today's video, we will be looking at a field monitor. What's a field monitor and why would you want one? Find out after I've said, roll titles. Hi, I'm Kip from KipHakes.tv and in today's video we are going to be unboxing and having a little bit of a play with this field monitor. This is the Port Keys LH5P and uh, I've picked it up from Amazon. I think it's around about the £380 mark, so it's not cheap. But what can you expect for your £380? Well, it's a 5 inch monitor that attaches to your camera, uh, it's got a HDMI input, and also, as well as that, it can control your camera. Now, there are quite a few cameras that it supports, but there are quite a few cameras that it doesn't support. And my camera, the Canon EOS M6 Mark II, that isn't on the list, so I'm not expecting this to be able to control my camera, which is a bit of a shame, but, this does have up updatable firmware, so you know, in future it might do. But I just wanted a slightly better quality field monitor. Now I've been rocking the Feelworld five inch field monitor for a little while now, and uh, I did an unboxing and setting up video of that, and I'll link that up there or there. I can never remember which side it is. Um, and that's, it's a good monitor, it's really good, but I am slightly concerned about its plastic construction. Uh, this is metal, so hopefully it should have a slightly higher quality and uh, because of its slightly higher price point than the Fieldworld monitor, I think it should be a bit better for filming out and about, which is something I've been doing a bit more of recently. This is a quite a high-end monitor. It does support very high-end cameras so we're talking about like black magic cameras we're talking about the canon r series it is a proper grown-up field monitor they do seem to be quite an interesting brand and they do have budget monitors as well which i might cover in another video that might be cool but yeah so uh, enough waffling let's get this cracked open okay so we've got a nice white box Oh, okay, this is good. It's got a little hard storage case that I assume the monitor's in. So usually when you get a monitor, you don't often get a little case with it, but this has got a case. That's pretty cool. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a moment. We've got some foam here. What's underneath the foam? Okay, so we've got a little card that says, uh, before removing the protective film from the LCD panel, Please power on units confirm the screen is in good condition. If you find any issues with the screen, please contact factory or distributor immediately. Okay. <laughs> and then we've got some cables and stuff. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, cable with a, that looks like a sort of 2.5 mil plug. Got a mini USB connector on the other end. So I think this, the monitor itself has the mini uh, USB connector on it. And these are control cables depending on your camera. So it's got this sort of uh, 2.5 mil pin. None of my cameras have that. So I assume that's probably for a slightly fancier camera. Uh, what do we have here? Okay, so this is what um, my camera would use but it's not supported so it's irrelevant so this is a USB-C to a mini USB connector which again is on the monitor and this goes into your camera so if your camera doesn't have one of those connectors there are other control cables available from port keys if you've got a micro USB port on your camera then you'll probably or you will need a separate cable which you can get from port keys uh, they're just called control cables. Um, okay, I'm not sure what this is. This seems to be some sort of power output cable. So maybe you can power external devices like an HDMI transmitter or even maybe your camera 
from the battery. So that's got a sort of weird five pin connector plug on it and uh, a power cable. And then we've got some little aerials, okay. Yeah, I think for some of the really fancy cameras, you can do wireless control and that's why it comes with some aerials. Um, so you've got like a little stubby one and um, a not so stubby one. Oh, and what else is in the box? So we've got a USB stick on in here, which it contains the manual and it also contains some LUT profiles because you can put LUTs onto the monitor and have the correct LUT for your camera. And uh, if you know what a LUT is, then you're a better person than me. This is quite a complicated monitor. I'm only going to go into the very basics in this video um, because it's an unboxing and we could be here forever. So let's have a look at the monitor itself. I'm really impressed that it comes with this nice case. Papa! Well, there we go. So what have we got? On the top of it, we've got the function keys, which toggles on and off sort of standard settings like uh, focus peaking, uh, false color, histogram, stuff like that. You can turn those on and off with the function keys and you can program them to be whatever you want them to be. Uh, we've got a power switch there. We've got the uh, menu controls um, because this is a touch screen, but you can turn the touch screen off and have just have the sort of standard menu buttons up here. Then we've also got the antennae uh, connector there. What have we got on the back? So uh, on the back, we've got the uh, battery compartment and um, it takes a wide range of batteries. I'll put them on the screen because I can't remember them off the top of my head. Seems to have a, ah, I did, I was about to say it seems to have a speaker, but I think that is actually a fan. It does have a fan, I know that. And it's also got um, fan control on it so you can turn the fan speed down so you don't have a in the background of your shots. Then we have got um, an HDMI in, an HDMI loop output and a headphone socket. So the headphone socket is super handy if your camera doesn't have a headphone socket for monitoring audio, which mine doesn't, so that's good. And then on the bottom, we've got the standard tripod connector. You know, you can mount it to an arm. And then we've got a uh, mini USB connector there for remote A. So these uh, control cables plug into those. And then we've got a USB socket so you can load in LUTs if you like. LUT, 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 LUT. And uh, this says remote B and uh, DC 7 to 24 volts. So yeah, that does seem to be like for power output and also there might be a different control cable that plugs into there as well. So yeah, it's a metal construction. I did mention a screen protector, but I don't think there is a screen protector on mine. I feel no screen protector, okay. Yeah, it's got a nice kind of gloss finish to the screen, but it doesn't, look at that, it's not very reflective. You can't see the camera in it, so that's really good for when you're outside and uh, out and about. And yeah, it's a nice metal construction. So um, I've got a battery. This is one that I got from Amazon years ago and it sort of powers loads of different things and it should fit onto this camera. Let's give it a go. Okay, let's turn it on. There we go. I, did, I have seen a few people mention in Amazon reviews that it takes a moment for it to come on, which seems to be correct. There we go. The board keys doesn't actually make that sound just added that right let's zoom in a bit so you can see what's going on there we go that's a really nice color it's very bright and vivid and also i'm looking at this from an odd viewing angle but it's it still looks fantastic so i'm not going to bother plugging in the remote cable because i don't think it will work um you know if you want to join this channel and uh help fund it, then uh, I might be able to afford a fancy camera that this plugs into and I can control. But for now, I'll just uh, get the HDMI. Okay, so let's uh, play with the function buttons. We've got um, check field there. 
We've got peaking. Wow, that is a lot of focus peaking. Yeah, that might need adjusting in the settings. Uh, so we've got false color. And we've got RGB waveforms. I like RGB waveforms, I don't know why. Oh look, we can turn down the sensitivity of the peaking, that's what we need. There we go, that's better. The menus are a bit weird, like, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, look, there we go. Okay, so through more luck than judgment, I've now got it into this menu where you can alter the picture settings. So um, yeah, you've got your brightness, contrast, chroma, sharpness and tint, um, anamorphic settings, backlight and color temperature. And then you can flip the screen in this menu. You know, if your monitor's mounted upside down or whatever, you can flip things around. A uh, bit of the on-screen display stuff there, that's fine. Uh, here is where you can load in different LUTs. Oh, okay, so this is how you can load LUTs in from the USB stick. But, um... So I would definitely say this isn't something that you should just do exactly what I'm doing and just pick up and play and um, just hope for the best. I think there will be a case of reading the manual, which is a bit of a bore, but, you know, as I've said before, this is quite a grown-up product, so, uh, you know, it's best to get full uh, use out of it, and, you know, more, and hopefully a better insight into how it works, rather than just watching this idiot faff around with it. So, uh, yeah, we've got volume control, and then, uh, what's that? Oh, just uh, version information. So you can update it via USB, like I mentioned earlier, so that's pretty cool. But it genuinely is a very nice monitor. Like, it look, the, the color reproduction through the camera is just insane. It just looks real. So yeah, I think what I'm gonna have to do is go and read the manual, basically, and get a better grip of this. On the surface, this is quite a cute little monitor, and I'm I'm really pleased with it. It's it's definitely aimed at the higher end of the market. If you're starting out, then I would say this some of the lower end port key models would be good for you, or the feel world like I've been using. It's really good, but this is a quality product. You know, it's metal construction. I wouldn't recommend throwing it off a building or anything, but it does feel quite sturdy. Oh, and it also has. It also has pinch to zoom, which is quite cool. Although it does seem to uh, send things a bit glitchy while you're doing it. But once you've zoomed in, you can see literally the hairs on my arm. <laughs> zoom out. So that is a quick overview of this Portkey's LH5P monitor. It's really nice. I'm very happy with my purchase. As I say, it's it's quite in depth, so I'm gonna to have to read the manual, but I think once I've got the gist of it and the hang of it, it could be quite a powerful ally. Anyway, that is it from me from this video. If you've enjoyed it, then please do consider subscribing. And if you really like it, then you can join this channel and you'll be able to watch this video before anyone else does, if you join at the 4.99 or above tier. But you know, even just a subscribe, a quick like, or dislike, whatever. It's all good and it all helps this channel grow. So that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll be back soon for some more vlogging fun. See ya.